Hello everybody. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Let's head on into it. So thank you so much for coming. Today we wanted to talk a little bit about collaboration and specifically the future of collaboration and, and the tools and resources that we have built and are looking to build in the future at Roblox so that all of you guys can collaborate as efficiently as possible. Before we dive into it, wanted to quickly introduce ourselves though. Uh, so my name is Jed. I'm a product manager at Roblox working in the Creator Cloud team. I've been here for about uh, just over a year and a half now. Hi, I'm Shreya. I've been at Roblox for a little over three years. Um, I'm a senior product manager on the collaborative development team. Awesome. Cool. So, collaboration. I think it's one of the like, core pillars that makes this community as fantastic as it is. I think the like, tenacity that everyone here has for like, helping each other, sharing ideas and thoughts, and like, just generally working together is one of the like, key reasons why Roblox as a platform today is like, where it is today, and also kind of why the community, uh, creator community even is as successful as it is. And as Shreya and I were kind of pulling together this talk and thinking about what we talk about. You know, we, we look back over the last year or so and at all of the kind of some interesting and cool collaborations that we had seen over the last year. And they're really, really diverse. You know, we see like big brand names working with creators. We see large influencers working with creators. We see obviously creators working with other creators. You know, like we're talking about, you know, experiences, but also creators working together to make sure that, you know, it is efficient for everyone uh, to develop experiences on, on Studio, so you know, obviously Studio plugins and, and stuff like that as well. But collaboration is more than just a cool thing to talk about. Because at the end of the day, teams make great experiences. You know, if we look at this graph here, you know, generally speaking, a creator who is more successful on the platform will be working with more creators. And I, I know obviously like this graph here is showing people who you know, make an experience, it gets to the front page, they get a bunch of revenue from it, and then they start hiring. But like, the reason they start working together at that point is to remain competitive within the overall market. And then also, you know, on the other side of the coin as well, we see a whole bunch of people start working together and to then release their first experience. And generally speaking, those experiences you know, might find it easier to, to climb up the ranks, as it were. So, to bring it back to us at Roblox, you know, it is critical for us to make sure that all of you guys are set up for success on the platform. It is quite literally our jobs. You know, and as teams are such a great indication of success, when we enable collaboration, we are also enabling individual success as well. So that is kind of why we're here today, and that's why we think so much about collaboration at Roblox. Today, kind of specifically wanted to focus in the kind of the middle of the journey here, you know, the journey from decides, you deciding you want to work with someone or, or kind of start to form a team or, or join a studio or whatever, to then going ahead and, and making some fantastic content. Kind of those two critical issues. The first one is, how do you find someone who like, you click with? How do you find a project that inspires you? And then once you've found those people, that team, you know, that project, how do you actually work efficiently with them? So, we'll kick it off with scaling teams. You know, as I said, you know, the first step is obviously to find these right people, uh, you know, the right team, the right project, the right group, whatever it may be. And we have actually just released a new platform for that. Uh, so Talent Hub recently came out. Uh, it is scaling out to everyone aged 13 and over uh, currently, actually. We're currently doing that right now. And its goal is to enable creators to discover and connect with one another and foster mutual trust so that they can work together. And I know Matt yesterday in the keynotes kind of spoke a little bit about Talent Hub, so I'll consider this a quick refresh before we move on to some of the new stuff. You know, and when we think about Talent Hub, we think about three primary things, three primary lenses, basically. And the first one is around discovery. You know, how, does a how does a user find the right person to work with? And then we think about trust. You know, once two people have found each other, how do they trust each other? It, as it turns out, trusting strangers over the internet with your money is quite difficult. So Talent Hub tries to you know, start to bridge that gap. And then finally, we think about presence as well. Yeah, how does a creator portray themselves, their work, their accomplishments to their friends, their peers, and the wider creator community? And as I said, Talent Hub has just come out. So I just kind of wanted to take uh, a few seconds to speak to 
kind of how it's being used so far. Um, and the short answer is yes, it is being used so far. So you know, there's already a thriving community on it, which is absolutely fantastic to see. Um, so we have just shy of 6,000 uh, creators who have engaged with the platform in the last 30 days. That's not users who have come and checked out Talent Hub. That's users who have posted jobs, who have applied for jobs, who have posted their creator page, et cetera. And then we have 450 jobs that are currently hiring. I think that's actually a, day, a few days out, uh, out of date. We're like over 500 now. And you, know, you can open your laptop today and go and apply to any of them. They're all there. And then finally as well, we have over 2,000 creators who are open to work, people who are looking actively or passively for other projects, other teams to collaborate with. So I want to spend most of the time talking about the future of Talent Hub. You know, we've obviously announced it on the Dev Forum and like kind of spoken at length about what we have built up to this point, but we've not really kind of shed light on the future. So when we think about the future of Talent Hub, we once again think about it through the main three lenses, discovery, trust, and presence. So I thought I'd just take a few minutes to kind of go through one of them at a time. So on discovery, it's an interesting challenge because there are so many different types of creators and they all have very different, very specific needs. So I know like, for example, someone who is looking for friends to like play around with in studio and make an experience after like school in the evenings is probably not going to be looking for a full-time job at a studio and obviously, you know, vice versa. So when we think about the future of discovery, we think about it through kind of, or we think about it as three separate kind of next stages. And the first one is filtering. Right now, we already have you know, some filtering within Talent Hub. For example, you can filter and say, hey, I only want to see jobs that offer real currency, let's say. But we can absolutely take that a good few steps further. You know, maybe you want to specify the specific currency range that you're looking for. Maybe you want to define a specific time zone range. Maybe you, want to, maybe you can only employ people who are like, 18 over due to any legal restrictions uh, kind of as to where your company is based. You, know, you should be able to filter and define all of these different uh, characteristics. And then next we think about relevancy, which is the ability for you know, the search to infer really what you're actually trying to get at. You know, right now, you search, you filter, and then it throws all the results. But we really want to make sure that the best results are at the top of the front page. And then finally, suggested content, which is basically relevancy, but kind of even more. So we start to proactively suggest content. Uh, you know, so for example, if you have applied to some engineering jobs, and then the following morning you log back onto Talent Hub, maybe it started suggesting you other engineering jobs that it thinks might be a very good match for you. Moving on to trust. You know, how does Talent Hub foster enough trust for people to start working together? Uh, this is an interesting one as well, because once two people have started working together, the best way they can build more trust is just by working together more. So in the context of Talent Hub, when we say trust, we basically kind of think the, the minimum viable trust to have these two strangers on the internet say, yes, I would love to work with you. So once again, three different stages. The first one is around reputation. Right now, obviously, we're showing like age verification. We've just recently rolled that out on Talent Hub, which is a good first step. but as is the theme, we can definitely take further steps. So Roblox is a large platform, and it's, therefore we have very many signals that we can pull from. You know, for example, what if the user has made successful uh, experiences in the past? What if they abide by the rules? We can start to bubble that up to users as well. And then coming on to creative feedback, this has been a very frequently requested feature, and for good reason as well, because you know, at the end of the day, if your friends uh, and kind of other people around the community have recommended this person, and you can see that they've done that, you're definitely more likely to go and work with them as well. And then finally, we think about commonality, because having things in common with strangers is a really great way to start a relationship with that person. So you know, Talent Hub can start to bubble up, you know, maybe uh, when you're looking at someone's creator page, for example, maybe the two of you have worked with someone, uh, like the same person previously. Maybe you've worked on similar experiences in the past. We can start to showcase that. And then finally, presence. You know, and once again, we're kind of breaking that down into three major stages. And the first one is around rich presence. You know, once again, going back to like Roblox is a large platform, there are many different types of assets. You know, there's experiences, you can upload things to Marketplace, all sorts of different things. And we want you to be able to surface that 
within your creator page. You know, a future where someone can drag the 3D model of an asset that you've uploaded within Talent Hub, I think is, is a good one. And then coming on to group presence, which is also a very frequently requested feature as well. And once again, very rightfully so. You know, this is the ability for teams, for projects, for people who are working together on something to showcase themselves as a singular entity within Talent Hub. You know, and this obviously has very like, immediate value adds, but I think one of the things that's kind of exciting for me at least is you know, this would allow or make it very easy for a large brand to come onto Talent Hub and post a job and say, hey, we're looking for a team of 10 to build this fantastic uh, branded experience for us. And then a, a group can go and apply for that uh, as a group, which is fantastic. And then last but not least, we think about integrated presence. You know, there are many, many different places across Roblox right now for creators to have their profiles. You know, we've got the dev forum, we have obviously the Roblox like player profiles and Roblox.com as well. You know, and we want to start integrating these a little bit more into Talent Hub. You know, I, I think the best way to describe this is just with an example. You know, let's say you're on someone's creator page and you're viewing it and you see, you know, you're, you're dragging through this, this wonderful 3D model that this user has uploaded to the marketplace within Talent Hub and you're like, I want to add this to my experience. You know, you can click and you go through into the marketplace and you can read reviews about that item and maybe some more stats about it and then you can click and add it straight in from Studio. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of a very high level look. It's not a comprehensive roadmap. There are many other things that we're thinking about and working on, you know, before this, during this, and after this as well. So yeah, as I say, it is instead a high level kind of strategic overlook on where we kind of see the future of Talent Hub as it continues to grow. But that is enough from me about Talent Hub. I will hand it over to Shreya. Thank you. Awesome. So now that we've talked about how to gather talent to make some awesome teams, we're going to jump into a little bit more about how we're going to make those teams the most efficient. So we know that not only are experiences made by teams, but experiences themselves are made up of hundreds, thousands of micro pieces of granular content. Typically, um, those pieces of content are also made by collaborators um, and by multiple people. So to that end, we want to ensure that at every stage of development and creation, sharing and collaboration is seamless. So we're looking to enable all content development, no matter how big or how small, to be reusable, easy to iterate on, and shareable. And we're going to dive into what each of those mean. So reusability. We want you to be able to create once and use anywhere. So that means create or upload any single piece of content and use it in any experience across the platform. We also want this content to be easily adaptable to minor changes, configurations, so that's usable in multiple contexts with minimal overhead. So what does this mean? Let's imagine that you're building a forest environment filled with trees. So we want you to be able to build maybe one or two base trees with the appropriate materials and the art style that matches the rest of your experience. But then let's say you're building out this forest, so you want to duplicate it hundreds of times, maybe make some minor changes to size, leaf and branch density, maybe a little bit of color changes, and then spread them across your landscape to create this realistic looking forest. But to do that, we don't want you guys to make hundreds of trees. We want you to make one or two, make those minor changes that are adaptable and with minimal overhead, and then build out that landscape super fast and efficiently. No content is made perfect the first time. So while you or your team are collaborating on any piece of content, we're going to make sure that iteration is fast and seamless. So what does this mean? This means that we're going to provide versions with history, provide rollback and roll, roll forward mechanics, and a suite of update capabilities. This includes mass update, auto update, live update. I know that could sound scary. So again, all of these are going to be manageable by developers um, so that you have full control and awareness over what is happening with your content. So say you or your teammate, you're making a change to a vehicle acceleration script that's being used by many, many cars in a racing game. We want you to be able to make just one change to that acceleration script and have the option to push that update to all assets that are using that script with a single click, and everything is automatically updated. And last but not least, sharing is a crucial component of collaboration. So we want to make sure that any piece of content that you create is shareable out of the box with individuals, with groups, and the world. So sharing will be controlled via a wide set of access permissions that you can turn on and off as you decide. 
And when we say sharing to the world, we also mean selling content, managing content in the developer marketplace. So this means that we'll be able to give you controls over the versions and updates that your consumers can receive. So right now, what is the current state of the marketplace? For most pieces of content, once it is published to the marketplace and you opt to use it, you kind of get a static copy from that moment in time in your game. But as asset creators, if you're looking to make constant updates um, to, let's say, a vehicle system or a weapon system, something like that, and you want to be able to share this content to your developers, we want to make sure that the update capabilities and the versioning and the live update abilities are able to be pushed from creators to consumers so they don't have to go back, reinsert, and retake from the marketplace. It'll become much more seamless. So all of that being said, many of you probably are thinking, OK, some of this sounds similar to a product out there called Packages. So before we get into Packages, we kind of wanted to level set what our overall vision was. But we will dive into a few details about Packages themselves. So previously, the Packages team, we were focused out on building this unique concept meant to be the sole driver of reusable and shareable content. But since then, we've kind of taken another approach. We're thinking, OK, reusability, shareability, and the ability to have iteration, that's all super important. But is it only important for packages? No. So we think that, OK, well, how can we make this better? We're going to take all of those features, we're going to generalize them, and apply them to all assets that are currently out there. So that being said, this means that in the future, anything from meshes to audio to models, all of that will have all of the capabilities that we just discussed with shareability and um, versions and things like that. But Packages is a product that's out there. And we have a responsibility to all of you to make sure that it works and it's doing exactly what it's intended to be used for. So over the last several months, we've actually made a bunch of changes um, kind of behind the scenes to make Packages work even better. So a few of these features included supporting pivot points for packages to make insertions and rotations more intuitive. We sped up places with large number of packages so that they can auto-update in seconds instead of minutes. We've also increased the stability of packages to account for better detection of modifications. So what's next? We're going to be working on feature sets to make sure that packages will no longer block place publishing, that they retain um, constraints and welds to the world space um, when they're being updated. And then apart from that, we're also going to take a look at, OK, all of this, this entire feature set that we're applying to assets, are there any other asset types that might be applicable and useful to developers? So yesterday, Dave and Dan, they mentioned code libraries, scripts, things like that. So we'll be looking into how can we extend the asset types we have to address all of your needs. So that's kind of the state of the world on packages. We haven't forgotten about it. We're working really hard to make sure it works. And we're also extending the best features to the rest of our asset system. OK, switching gears really quick. So we know that all of you, many of you here, are a part of teams and a part of great teams. But we also know that, especially early developers, not all of you may have the opportunity or resources to hire and work with other people. But despite that, we want to make sure that you have all of the available resources to you to make highly engaging experiences. And that avenue is the developer marketplace. So we want to make sure there's high quality assets that are pre-made, um, also probably by this community, that can be inserted and used in your games so that you can efficiently make these highly engaging experiences. So believe it or not, the developer marketplace today is already huge. We have over 240 million assets created by almost 8 million creators and counting. This includes 3D models, audio, and plugins for development. Given that large ecosystem, there are three main areas that our team is focused on. We're going to dive e into each of those in some detail. So first and foremost, we want to make sure that content is safe, safe to use, doesn't harm any of your experiences. Given a corpus of 240 million assets, we also want to make sure that we're enhancing our search and discovery mechanics so that you're being shown assets that are most relevant to your development context, to your experience. And we also want to ensure that as creators, we're creating the most thriving ecosystem that incentivizes all of you to contribute and that you can also receive some benefits from. So consumer safety. Consumer safety is our number one priority. Roblox, unlike many of our competitor marketplaces, prides itself on being accessible to all creators. So what does this mean? 
This is both a blessing and a curse. This is a blessing because we get hundreds of great pieces of content into the marketplace every day. But this also means that because we don't have any review of assets, we do get some bad things that slip in there. But we've taken it upon ourselves as the marketplace team to ensure that as consumers, you will always have faith in what you take and it will not harm your experiences. So behind the scenes, we've made some major improvements to identify and remove the visibility of bad content. And many of you know in the last couple of years, we've also exposed more configurations to increase awareness and control for how plugins and models can contribute to, to your experiences. So this previously included HTTP requests, controlling, controlling script injections, and we're looking to make sure that we extend that permission suite so you always know how third-party content is interacting with your experience. We also wanted to take this time to quickly call out another big initiative that is on our radar. So our team is going to be looking into an official licensing system for you to be able to bring external content onto the platform. So we know many of you have already gone above and beyond to try to make your own brand partnerships um, and work with other external brands and teams. And we want to make sure that you have an official licensing system in place so you can bring that IP onto the platform safely without fear of it being removed. All right, a quick note on search and discovery. So again, with over 240 million assets in the marketplace, it's important that you're able to find exactly what you're looking for and efficiently. So there are several things that we are doing to make this happen. Asset categorization is a big one. This is how we're able to group relevant content so that you can easily find it. So you can imagine category for vehicles, for weapons, for environment. So as you're building out a scene, we already group content that is related, so you're easily able to insert it without having to search for every single piece every time. Improvements in audio search. This is a big one that we've heard from all of you. We know that finding sounds in our huge library can be really hard, so we're going to be introducing new ways to search and filter for sound effects, for background music, um, for regular engaging music, so that you know exactly what you're putting into your experience. Personalization of asset discovery. So as our library constantly grows, we want to make sure it's adapting to who you are as a developer, to what you're building, the kinds of content that you're most attracted to, whether that's models or it's plugins. So we're going to be personalizing our asset discovery. And last but not least, we're also going to be expanding the types of content that are in the marketplace. And we're going to be starting with fonts. Awesome. Last but not least, we want to make sure that we're creating an ecosystem that sets up all of our creators for success. So we're actively looking into expanding monetization opportunities that make sense for different types of content, different type for types of creators. So here you can imagine subscriptions, revenue share, and more. And again, as we expand monetization opportunities, we have to also make sure that you guys are all getting the analytics that you need so you can make the most educated decisions in how you price for your consumers. Cool. OK, I think as kind of just before we delve into Q&A, um, you know, in summary, we've spoken a little bit about kind of how you scale your team, how you can find the right people to work with. And then once you've found them, how you can collaborate efficiently with them. And then also how you can augment your, your collaboration process with additional and external resources. And then hopefully go on and make a fantastic experience. Um, so yeah, that is it from us. Thank, Thank you. you.